back to Off Pitch Africa. Uh, Miriam, just welcome our, our fans back with a word or two on who you are or just something then we carry on. Okay. Oh, uh, this is Off Pitch Africa and um I like the fact that um Off Pitch Africa is actually getting to air more of hockey. Yeah, so it's 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 a good um it's a good development. Yeah, so thank you for the job that you guys are doing. Thank you so much. Hopefully, we'll use you to get netball people on board. I don't know why, but uh, it's a new interest of mine. I'm getting a lot of feeds, netball, netball, and I'm like, okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. I want you to pick one mm -hmm. uh, or kick one. Yeah, you decide. Uh, Lakers or Blazers? Uh, I'll pick Blazers. No. KU, UN? KU. I'll pick KU. <laughs> There's no br no brainer that yes. Yeah. Uh, Strathmore USA. I'd pick Strathmore. Why? Because I I play I've played for Strathmore for the Africa Club Championships this year. The one the one, the one in Nairobi. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Amira DFG. I'd pick DFG. Why? Because uh, I've also played for them in friendlies and tournaments. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good team to be in. Okay. Yeah. So one of the teams to consider while now you're thinking on after university hockey. Yeah, it's it's actually a good team. So Okay. Yeah. I want to know how many ri rival players you can name from the following teams. Mm-hmm. Jay Quat. Uh I know Lucky. Mm hmm I know Emma. Uh Joki, Mariam, Perpetua. Uh, I don't think I know anyone, anyone else. else. Yeah. Strathmore. I know Jerry, I know Tom Dai, I know Diana Wino, I know Maureen Ngoche, Nicole Joy, mm -hmm. Jessica Healy, I know Molvin, I know uh, Tracy, I know Rita, I know Becky. How about your rivals, you and? Uh, of course. Uh, I know Sims. I know Quinta. I know Oduka. I know Kate. Mm. Who else? Twink. I, Twinkle. <sighs> Twinkle, I only know of uh, the two twins, uh, Alice <laughs> and uh, Dora. Yeah, and I think Megan, the captain. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you look for in a role model? Uh, I think the aspect of them being able to lead a team. Okay. And uh, what motivation do these people offer to that team that they play in? Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's much of it in what they do in the pitch. Yeah, you you might be a good leader and not a good player. So, yeah. So locally or internationally, who would you say is your role model? I'd I'd go for Eva de Hoda, who plays for Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, I've been watching Eva for a while now. For the last Pro League season, she's been off due to, of course, life developments for her. But yeah, Eva is basically a very composed player. She's not very skillful. I wouldn't say she's really skillful, but she's really good at passing. She does really well in the midfield. She plays central midfield and she's really good at it. She okay. picks the passes. She does the tackles. And she's been a great captain for the Netherlands team. So it's in the simplicity. Yeah. Or uh, there's something else. I like the fact that she's been able to lead Netherlands into winning back-to-back -back Olympic medals. Is there anyone who can rival them right about now? Because I feel almost teams are coming short in... Uh, being able to... I think the closest that has been is uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. And um, since I really like the way Netherlands play, I'd say the reason why it's been a bit difficult for teams to get to defeat Netherlands is because Netherlands 
found a plan, found their strong point, and they've really worked so hard for it because they play the person, person go, person go. So everyone is involved. The ball is moving. Yeah, because them. it's really difficult actually to pick star players in Netherlands. And like it is with Argentina, you can actually pinpoint the highlight players. But for Argentina, it's more of a team play. They do the passing and you'll actually realize through down, throughout the match, they'll always do the passing from the first third to the second third and actually to the attacking third. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, in Africa, which team uh, stands out for you? Of course, it's South Africa because they have a good development program. Yeah. That's the only thing that making them stand out? Yeah, it's the only because uh, you look at um, the South African team. Most of the players at around 23, 24, these people have almost 50 caps. Which if you look at our team, national team, you'll find they are working between 17, 18 cups at 25 24 so that means they are the sa players started playing for the national team way earlier and of course have gained experience yeah okay uh, what are your thoughts on the west african teams ghana and nigeria they've also been putting up some bit of a fight in uh, continental alone yes they have but this is there's only too much you can do when it comes to hockey because Hockey is more of a skill set top type of a play. Yeah, so whoever gets the skills and the basics right, they'll always take the day. So you find Nigeria, you find Ghana, they're struggling with the same things we as Kenya are struggling with. Yeah, which is we've not had a good development program. So we are really struggling with still getting into basics because at 22, we want to get into structures. And you look at, I say, by 17, 16, these people are already done with the structures. Now they're perfecting it. Yeah. Okay. So with this in mind, what's your thoughts on Team Kenya and uh, what aspirations should we be looking at if ever we want to compete the likes of South Africa before we can think of the European teams? I think we need to go back to basics. We need to find a plan on what works for us. Because I'm sti- I still feel we, as Kenya, we haven't ad- identified with our strong aspects. Because like you see for Netherlands, this team knows passing is their strength. And they've really worked much into it. Same thing with Argentina. They know ball carriers take the day for them. Yeah. So And they've really invested into that structure of hockey. But we as Kenya haven't really... Um, I'd say we haven't really found our stronghold... So we are still struggling with trying to get into different structures and try and see what works for us. So if we are to work and to get into the level they said that we can be able to compete with them, we did find what works for us. Yeah. At what age group then can we start implementing some of the structures or even the ideology to create a stronger team? I think from under 14 because once you get to 14 years, you're already in junior high school if you're going with the Cambridge sort of system. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you've already gotten the basics and now you need now to start exploring which structure is going to work for you. So from 14 years, we need to be able to work with structures of which currently at 14 years, that's when we are introducing hooking to players. So we still have a lot to do to catch up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Back locally to the teams, uh, what I want you to give maybe one word or thoughts on the following teams. Uh, Wolverine. Mm, I'd say it's um it's a short social team. That's more of it. Like I'd say, yeah. Okay. You win. You win a competitive. Ku. Uh, Ku is also very competitive, depending on what they really want on that day. What it 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 matters or it varies. Yeah, because. If if okay, I've I've been a team, th- I've been a player there, and I can tell you, uh, somehow these people show up when they want to show up. It's a team. If they they really want to play, they'll play, and if they don't want to, they won't. And yeah. So co- there's no consistency in performance yeah. with that in mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, J Quat. J Quat is a developing team, because for the longest time I think J Quat has been struggling after they went back to Super League. They've been struggling with rebuilding their team. But somehow, right now, I think I can say they are 
they're somewhere they've gotten something at least they've played together for a while and now but uh, my worry is as soon as they have some cohesion amongst themselves and then players some leave. Yeah, yeah, so. players go to other club people get done with school yeah actually i'd say that uh, i think that has been the major undoing for jquad because you look at yuen most of the players are still there not very most of them leave the team maybe one or two but then you find like for jquad you can actually count the number of players who are still playing right now so most of the players after they graduate that's it they leave okay yeah new sayu yes are you um i'd say it's also a very competitive team yeah they've really benefited from the fact that uh, most of the players don't leave after they graduate so okay yeah they maintained most of their players i think also while they are in school already uh, the incentive is enough for someone to actually carry on with the sport or just even fully get involved with it yeah because most of them are still around so okay yeah Uh, Strathmore. Strathmore also is also struggling I think with more of uh, the same inst- the other institutions are suffering from mm-hmm. because um in as much as they have a uh, give back to the team at some point most of the Strathmore players also leave so they go back to rebuilding again but the only advantage about Strathmore is the fact that they have a scholarship system they'll always get new players to play for them okay. yeah um, and they have something to hold them to play yeah because for public universities you find people play because they want to but then for Strathmore you play you have to play because you have to your life depends on it yeah you are brought to the school uh, and academics first definitely but yeah close in mind it's also playing yeah they have to follow up on your, okay. your in as much as you're playing they also follow up on your performance so mm. you have to keep up with both uh, amira uh for amira i don't know which one that use for them but um amira has really good players I, I, i think actually it, it i really don't get why they struggle with finishing in top three. i really don't get it because they have good players and they don't really lose a lot of players and they're always getting new reinforcements even if it's one or two they're still getting reinforcements so some of the best while at it yeah uh, blazers blazers is the most dominant team I'd, i'd say for the moment Do you, f- you feel the dominance is close to coming to an end? I don't think so because unlike most of the uh, clubs around in the Premier League mostly Blazers rarely loses their players even if they go they'll still come back. So and most of these players at some point have gotten to play for the national team and they still bring back that that experience and then they build up on it they bring new players and they still these new players when they come in they still get a chance to go to the national team so the exposure keeps coming coming in so do you think them losing their main sponsor a while back uh, really affected of course the money aspect is very important when it comes to sports so money was the main i think was the main reason why they were really good at it because they would manage to pay for training sessions they'd manage to pay for a lot of things to access allowances for yeah. the players and also money is a really good motivation so the fact that right now back then it was a semi, i'd say semi 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 pro sort of mm-hmm. and now they've gone back to being now it's just a club that's struggling to stay afloat they have to work so hard to ensure that they've paid for the leagues they've paid for the playing surface yeah and to get their players together So yeah it has really affected their performance yeah okay Lakers uh I think that's the most aggressive team so far in the Premier League What have you noticed about all the teams that we've mentioned uh the fact that uh they are struggling I think <laughs> all of them are in the premier league yeah anyway did we tr- did we touch on kus we did and how they are uh have we talked of lakers yes we have yes we have out of all of this so what would be your dream 11 considering we've only mentioned teams that are at close to top of the uh performance level in the country okay for my dream 11 okay 
Goal think, ki- goalkeeper, sorry. Okay, for the goalkeeper, I think I'd pick Alice from Blazers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and because she's she's a young goalkeeper, and she's really good at it. I've trained with her and I've seen her play. She's a really aggressive goalkeeper. Yeah, so for the center back, I think I'd pick um, Tracy from Strathmore. I've played with her and I know I've watched her play back from when she was playing at with for Technical University of Kenya. Yes. Yeah, and she's a really good defender. She's a confident defender. She's a tall defender, so she knows how to make herself large in the defense. Yeah. Yeah, and then um for the other defender, I think I'd pick Melody. Yeah, because she's a good tackler. Yeah, and she's a very effective defender when it comes to one positioning. On one. Yeah. And those one on ones, you're almost sure she'll always get them. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh for the right back, uh I'd go for Maureen Owiti for from Lakers. Yeah, she's a good she's a good uh offload when it comes to attack. So I'd I'd want to play with the uh, wing backs who can actually help us when we are attacking and Maureen is one of those good uh defenders. Yeah, and then uh for the left back I'd pick Naliaka. I don't know if she's still playing right now but yeah, Naliaka has been a good defender for Amiras. Yeah. She's one of the most composed defenders I think I've ever seen and she's really good at communicating and tackling. Yeah. And then uh for the center mm. midfielder yeah. I'd pick Jerry Onsare. She's a young player but who's really good with ball distribution in the center. She's a good tackler, she's a fighter. So yeah, I think Jerry would be a very good choice for me for a midfielder. And then um for the right midfielder I'd pick um Naomi Kemunto from USIU. She's a really skillful player. I think one of the best skillful players we have. Yeah, and uh, on the left I'd pick uh, Morino Komu. She's a swift player. She really knows how to get into the circle and try and get a PC or maybe to get try and score. Yeah, and then uh, for the center forward I'd go for Alice Owiti. She's a lethal forward. She's skillful and she also has the work rate. So Alice will be a very good addition link to that between, front line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, link between the midfield and the forward line. And then the up front forward I'd pick um uh Chebet. Yeah, she's fast. She's skillful and she's a goal hunter so. Yeah. I'm always sure I can always depend you on You can Chibet. get your goals through her. Yeah. Uh, if if you feed her properly with the balls here. Yeah. yeah. And then the other forward I'd pick Morin Ngoche from Strathmore. Mm-hmm. I think uh when it comes to the new and I'd say the very aggressive forwards, Morin is one of them. She's young, but she's really aggressive. She doesn't get to be the top scorer. But at least she's mostly in the top five scorers in the Premier League. Okay. Despite the fact that I think this is her second season playing mm. the Premier League, she's a really good forward. Yeah. Where are you in the squad? Eh, uh, that's my dream 11. I'm assuming at this point. <laughs> you are coaching. Yes. Oh, you are the touchline. Yeah. Yeah, so who are like uh, another five you want to have on your bench? People who can come on board and just make change. I'd have Tamnai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tamnai is quite a utility because she can play in as a forward, she can play in as a midfielder, and recently I also saw she is also really playing well as a right back. Yeah, so Tamnai would be a really good uh asset in my bench. I'd also have Gushu mm-hmm. for the experience and the leadership. Yeah, and then Jili. Jili is also a wholesome player, so I'd have her in my bench and then um for the defenders 
I think I'd have mm, I'd have Bito. Yeah, Bito is a very composed player and a very good team player. Yeah. And then um I think Harriet will also do. Harriet from USIU also. What of your support staff though? For support staff I think I'd go I'd really want coach Senge to be there. Yeah, he's a very composed coach and a very very good at analyzing. Yeah, I'd also want Kagochi to be in my team. His his game study and the ability to interpret the match and also spot the loopholes is top notch. And we as a country, I don't know, we've not really much tapped into his experience and everything, but he's a really good technical S- coach. Somehow he's more appreciated outside than, yeah, than he back is. at home. But then again, doctors are not one. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they say about being accepted at home. Yeah, professors are not accepted at home. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, some hypothetical situation here. Your teammate has two goals mm-hmm. and then you get a last minute stroke Uh, do you allow her to take the uh, to get a hat trick or, uh, or would you want to step up and hmm. I think when it comes to penalty strokes it's always who is more confident on it mm-hmm. personally I'm not really good at penalty strokes not because I can't do it but because it's really not my yeah. Re- recently you you guys had a, a missing two penalty strokes in a match And I missed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so at no particular point would you want to retake and uh, confirm that uh, maybe it was a... Uh... No, I, 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 when, when it comes down to those moments when you are the one who's supposed to carry the team, mm-hmm. I think I don't do so well in that. So, and I've accepted it at this point. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think I'd really want to step up and take those moments yeah okay uh, some of your teammates are in a slump they can just seem to get it on during a match uh, as a team player how do you go about this how do you help them just uh, gain the needed confidence to carry on okay i think the one thing i've i've learned over the few years that i've been playing and having to take the leadership role is the fact that the approach with different players is really different for instance someone like williams i'll shout at her and she'll get her head in the game but then you'll find another player maybe a junior player maybe and you'll have to find a way to talk to them and make sure that they understand that they can do better and yeah so you really have to learn the approach with the different players okay yeah know who to push too hard and know who you just need to motivate and let them be or so actually some of them you just have to be quiet about it yeah yeah and th- through your playing career so far i'm sure there are people who have really shaped your playing career uh, maybe coaches your brothers you've mentioned who are some of these people and how did they help in uh, making you who you are now okay of course my main my main person will be my brother because he's the one who introduced me to the sport. is he still playing no okay he stopped after campus yeah and decided to commit to other things here but He's the main person who pushed me to really want to get into hockey. He's mm-hmm. actually the only person who'd actually come to my high school matches. Yeah, so and we actually used to enjoy meeting each other because he was still playing for his high school and I'm still playing on this other side. So he really used to get me psyched up to want to go and play. And then fast forward, I'd say when I joined campus, coach Kagoche really worked so hard with me. I think he spotted the potential way early. And he really worked so hard to make sure that I fit into the team. Okay. Actually, for those people that we started playing with, most of them will actually tell you that Kagochi somehow favored me. But really, no, that was not really it. Mm-hmm. I think he spotted the potential and he really pushed me so hard. And I really had to step up. And then fast forward after Kagochi left, Wawa came in. I think now Wawa gave us the freedom to work with what works for us. I think when Kagochi was there, He really worked on individuals but when Wawa came in Wawa worked on the team. Okay. And I think that has been our strongest thing the fact that we can now play as a team and include the fact that we have really good players and contributing to the upgrowth of the team so yeah. with the, with the both 
coaching styles being so different mm-hmm. uh when do you think one suits a team and and when does how how is that balance supposed to be in your opinion uh it's actually a bit difficult to strike a balance because when you have really good players in the team you have to make sure that they believe that they are good and you also have to try and get this uh upcoming players to try and fit into the system so that they can fit into each other and i think that's why i like the coaching style senge uses because i've also worked under senge and senge knows how to make sure that two people are compatible he really knows how to use each other's strengths and weaknesses to fit each other in the team yeah so i think that learning the players difference and knowing who to work with and what what time um is the main factor here okay yeah uh, what would you say would be also an ideal situation when choosing a team you know you're finishing campus you want to go to a different team or a team is scouting you what criteria would you use particularly right now that you're thinking on moving to a different team uh, to decide where next do you go okay uh the two main things that i have in mind one is comfortability comfortability and you know trying to fit into into a team and then second uh my hockey development i don't intend to go from super league from premier league right now and going back to super league that's not the development curve that i want to take yeah, yeah so my main agenda here is to get a team that i'll be comfortable in and also get a team that's competitive for me because Uh, currently um my by i'd say my growth is like a bit flat line right now because yeah there's no much competition in where i am yeah so i really need a team that's a bit competitive and a team that suits my needs when it comes to play yeah i need to be in a team where i can comfortably play with my teammates okay yeah. and still be competitive while at it yeah hockey is very physical how do you keep uh, in shape or just maintain fitness mind you you also have to consider work and uh, life in between i think my greatest doing is the fact that i train with men yeah when you're training with men definitely you have to up your physicality you have to want to get the ball you have to make sure that you, you are faster in decision making yes yeah and all along i think that training with the men's team has always made me a sharper player so the intensity in the men's training is a bit higher than when compared to the ladies so when you come from um training with men and now playing with ladies it actually boosts your morale it actually boosts your confidence because if i can do it against the men then why not against the ladies, ladies. yeah and uh, also like um uh, you also have to put in extra work because the fact that you you only maybe get an hour to train it's not enough for you to get to do the ball work get to do the fitness get to do the conditioning yeah so you really have to do extra on the side maybe home workouts maybe work out at, at the work that you're doing yeah so you really have to find a way to work through it so do you have a routine for the physical fitness Uh, one that you'd want to share with our audience some more I'm, I'm <laughs> sure <laughs> at the moment i really can't say i have a i have a yeah i think which it kind of explains because right where i am i think i'm comfortable so there's no need to do extra because yes. either way you can still yeah i i'll just need to train some weeks before the match and i'll be good to go okay Yeah. But you have a game uh, another hypothetical. You have a game uh in over the weekend. Mm-hmm. How is that week like for you? Do you how do you go about it? I think when I have a match over the weekend that week is usually uh a very high intense week. Tuesday I have to really work so hard at training. Wednesday I have to really work. Thursday and then on Friday I normally give myself a break. Yeah because I go really hard on the previous days so yeah. I I also need to you know rest the body and also now start preparing mentally that there's a yeah. match coming okay yeah so I I've actually come to realize I think at some point we really used to train so hard until Fridays and then you get to Saturday and somehow mm. we still have the energy to work it through 
but by the time the match is done you're really so tired and so okay. worn out so i started doing the friday rest yeah and it has really worked for me then after a game how do you unwind mm, i think i've i've struggled with eating a lot when it comes to having when I, when i have a match i struggle with eating the previous day and the actual match day so i think the you easiest eat, you eat too much you eat too much i little, eat too little is... and somehow messes up my energy levels here but yeah but um after the post match i think it's easier to eat it's easier now to start thinking why why we got the results that we got and now moving forward what do we need to work on yeah what do we need do i need to work on as an individual and as a team what do we need to work on yeah okay uh another another interesting do you have rituals leading to the game mm, i i will literally say i do because i think different matches come with different um uh, expectations and yeah some matches you'd find maybe i'm a bit excited and then for some matches i sort of i'd say I'd, i freeze out yeah so Sometimes you'll find maybe I'm very quiet, sometimes I'm very loud and sometimes I'm just there, I'm just surviving. What teams give you this jitters? <laughs> actually, I wouldn't really say it's it's actually the team because you see most of these teams that I'd say we are almost at par. Mm-hmm. They are not I I don't know. It's usually a bit do I say a bit of an easier match. And also teams that are very highly rated for us, I also don't worry much about them because at the end of the day there's only too little that you can do exactly. but these teams that it's like we can beat them but also it's like they're a bit top of us that i think those are the matches that usually worry me more okay yeah do you have things that you watch motivation wise or listen to uh, just to help you get into the right frame not really i don't think i do <laughs> nothing on that card yeah Uh, which are the, some of the fittest team that you've come across in the league? Uh Strathmo. Mm-hmm. I think Strathmo has the m- most fit players. I think I don't know. I've trained with them and I know Strathmo usually has specific days for only conditioning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, unlike us, you know, okay, for us we know we do ball work week in week out and maybe do a bit of fitness in the end of the training mm-hmm. but Sathmo actually have specific days for fitness and then specific days for structures and then specific days for maybe now playing the matches yeah so Sathmo has really fit players and then uh, Blazers and then the rest of us are just yeah trying to find every, a balance every, everyone <laughs> yeah uh, what of our uh, toughest teams so i think so far our, our toughest team has been uh, blazers i think they beat us because of the experience they really have have quite experienced players yeah so it has really been our toughest match i think it's the only match we lose with very high margins but also as i said earlier titans play and show up when they want to because the last time apart from this season the last time we were in the premier league our match against blazers ended in 2-1 in favor of blazers which was a very good performance for us yeah so and i really can't tell what was different from the way we played the previous matches yeah so and locals also especially when they come to nairobi it's usually a really difficult match for us when it comes to a team that is just hitting the balls it's really a hassle for us you don't have answers for that yeah okay how about individual individuals in these teams anyone always is a challenge for you to just uh, keep at bay okay um i'd say kemunto also gives us a lot of trouble because uh when it comes to tackling or narrowing down to people who play sort of set pieces it's okay. easier to get them but uh when you get someone who's really individually brilliant it's really it's really difficult to try and you know tackle them because you, you really don't know what move they're going to pull up next okay. yes you can only be patient and wait and see what they do yeah yeah then Chebet she's skillful and she's fast so she really gives us trouble 
because you'll find her in the defense trying to help their defenders get the ball out up front she's also very fast and very efficient yeah. same thing with Moreno Kumu yeah those very fast and very skillful players are quite a problem for us okay yeah. just to find out who how much you know about your team mm-hmm. uh, who eats a lot in your team who eats a lot who eats a lot kabebi <laughs> she's the smallest but she's the most the person with the highest most, appetite. most appetite yeah and who talks a lot who talks a lot yeah me Okay, I'll agree. We'll have a uh, by the time we realize we've done an hour two hours, we will confirm that fact. Um what's best celebration or reaction one scoring individually or even for the team? Uh I think when it comes to celebrations, Ndinda has the best celebrations. <laughs> yeah, so she always comes up with most of the celebrations that we have. Sometime back me and Monique in Super League we used to do those celebrations. We actually used to say each other up during mm-hmm. the weekend tell each other yeah. this is the celebration we are going to do so it really used to push us want to score you score so that you can uh, yeah, and, the and now it's only us two who's doing it so yeah okay uh, who's the fastest fastest me of all the team yeah me. okay who's the funniest funniest yeah, i'd still say me <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the talking yeah Okay. Um who spends most of their time on the phone? Williams. Okay, what does she do on on phone? Williams is antisocial, so you'll always find her either listening to music. Okay. Maybe doing something on her phone. Uh, uh with this in mind, social media has, has become a very vital part as players or professionals in just uh, selling our skill sets uh, on your end how do you think it's also important to just uh, curate some a page where someone can come and immediately know what you do or what you are interested at okay i think for all, for us social media really works because it's through social media that we've actually gotten our kids a team from australia managed to give us and sometimes you know they really follow up because they're the like the orange kit no the orange kit Tom Olal gave them to us okay but back then this coach Oni who used to work for Wolves and Titans yeah. but then when he went abroad the fact that our page has been frequently been up and down you know we i think the fact that we we really work so hard to try and put something on it actually give some uh, someone like only to want to see what do we do so when they gave us the kit they actually followed up and they've been through to our social media to confirm that we're actually using that kit yeah yeah okay i think that's uh, really encouraging to hear so you would advise most people to just have uh, well set up pages because you never know yeah they, they actually even attract players because um like for me I think the fact that maybe the Titans team has uh, an IG page. So some people actually DM me from the fact that I've been tagged there. Okay. To try and ask which team can they join, which team will best suit their needs and yeah. So people come to your inbox seeking this kind of advice. Yeah. Okay. And so you can imagine if they actually getting to me and asking me so how many teams do they go to asking for? Mm, so same. if you really have a page, it's easier for people to get to you, but if you don't then it's really difficult for players to want and play for you okay yeah so maybe you give us your handles right about now and even if for the team for the titans while at it yeah i think for i did titans 20, it has a number at the end but it's titans mm-hmm. yeah for yourself uh mine is wanjiko.mwangi yeah all platforms that's, no that's that's on, on ig on and then on facebook it's miriam mwangi okay yeah i think this is a perfect time for us to take our second break uh, this is off pitch africa we are just engaging with miriam uh, finding out uh, what pushes her what keeps her moving uh, with the sport that we both love and uh, yeah keep keep engaging with us share your feedback ask your questions to uh, miriam Uh, as you've heard she responds to her dms so yeah uh, follow us on youtube of pitch africa uh, instagram of pitch africa likewise on facebook at of pitch africa you can also reach us on email 
can come on board with us on various uh, ends at uh, offpitchafrica at gmail.com. So stay tuned. We'll be coming with the third and final part with Miriam. Uh, we go a bit serious, a bit on on some of the issues uh, we've been asking most of the people who have been on board with us. So thank you so much and uh, stay tuned. Mm-hmm.